Good morning traders, welcome to your 7 minute market update utilizing technical analysis to predict direction based on human emotion. Today is May 12, 2013. Not too much to talk about in this video but let's get started anyway. Um, pretty much in this video we're going to talk about the same thing that we talked about in last week's video. Nothing has pretty much changed except for the fact that I said that I don't think we can get to this 165.80 but there is a level up there and if we did get to the 165.80 I'd probably initiate a short. If we did turn over before we hit the 165.80 and we got down to the 155.70, uh, 157 level then in that case I will go long. But ne neither of those happened and it looks like that there is a potential that we could get to the 165.80 and uh, if it does get there then I will initiate a short and it's only about $2 away so it's not unlikely or it wouldn't be unheard of for that to happen especially the way the uh, markets are pushing higher and higher for no really good reason uh, except that um, there's a lot of manipulation in the market right now. However. I do think that we are due for a correction. There's a lot of people out there that are expecting crashes in the market. And um, to be honest, I really don't think that there's going to be a crash, not anytime soon at least. And therefore, we should actually just trade what the market is is giving us. We have to play the hand that we're dealt with. And right now, uh, we are dealt with an uptrend. And that's the trend. Um, that's what we should be trading is the uptrend. I am just fearful that this uptrend is going to end um, anytime at any time I should say and uh, when that trend does end then um, the downtrend should start and when the downtrend does start I don't think it's going to be long lived but it will be a trend that that I am waiting for simply because that is where uh, you're going to make the money bottom line is as we all know as experienced traders um, and some of us that are uh, newer traders uh, the markets normally go down faster than they go up. I mean, you could have weeks of up and just in a day or two, um, all of those gains can just be taken away immediately. Fear is a lot is a lot stronger than hope is and therefore a lot of people a lot more people out there are the more experienced people would sell off more than the ones who are more of the newer people who will hold and when they do hold that's when you have a problem because you don't have your stops in place so far I've been stopped out all the way back over here break even so it's not a big deal I'm waiting for this guy to turn over so I can either go long if it goes here or short if it goes here so it's pretty simple nothing new nothing has changed which is why I haven't updated the Facebook page um, there's nothing right now that I can see that's telling me that this market is going to turn over. The trend is still going higher, at least on the daily chart. Um, we have already broken above this upper trend line here. However, just keep this in mind. Just because it's broken above this trend line here does not mean it's going to continue higher. All it means is there is a possibility that um, whenever you break an upper trend line here, there is a possibility that this is mani uh, market manipulation, whereas a lot of people probably shorted right here. Okay, I didn't, but a lot of other people I know for a fact has shorted here. And what they'll try to do is push the market higher to stop these people out and then bring it down. And that is uh, the manipulation that we normally see. And it's a common thing that we see um, in the markets today. So let's switch to the weekly since we have some time on this video. All right, this is the weekly chart of the SPY. And uh, let me just uh, delete all the drawings here. Now, if you notice on the weekly, we've just been heading higher and higher and we it's just been a non-stop move to the to the to the upside all right there we go let me just zoom out there we go I mean it's just been from this day all the way up and it just hasn't stopped since then now if I draw a trend line straight like this this trend line a lot of people don't draw trend lines uh, this way but um I do because it works for me. So there's a potential that we could get all the way up to the 168 level and past the 165. The 165 level could just be a normal little pullback. It doesn't mean that we're going to start correcting at that level. All it means is it might be a pullback and that's the last mathematical calculation that my formula has spit out to me saying that's when we're going to get a pullback or a correction. The 165 level, let me just put that back in there here is not too far away. The 165.80 level is right here. That is the last mathematical uh, calculation that I could come up with uh, to determine a, um, a possible correction at this area here. Now that formula was based on the uh, daily chart. I have not created a formula based on the weekly chart 
but what I'll probably do is post a chart on Facebook when I do formalize the weekly chart and then that'll give us a better determination of when um, the next levels will be based on the weekly information uh, versus the daily information. Now the daily information as we all know is not going to be as strong and as accurate as the weekly information as far as technical analysis goes but um, the weekly information at the same time isn't always as accurate as a daily and it's simply because I'm a short-term trader and the formula is geared more for short-term weekly charts are more for the longer term it doesn't mean that that's what I'm going to trade with but it's always nice to see that if you have resistance um, in the weekly chart and you have resistance in the daily chart then that just gives you a lot more of a ceiling um, and same goes for support where you have a stronger floor if both coincide together at the same time that's a lot of times when um, I will also initiate a trade all right so what we could also do is draw a bottom trend line over here like like so and then what we're what we basically see here is we're creating this really really long uptrend for years uh, we had somewhat of a correction here but it wasn't very much um, and then since since 2011 we've just shot up like a rocket okay um, we've had this trend line here from these two and then we've just broken up out of that so I'm thinking if we can even get to this upper trend line here that would also be a nice short to uh, watch out for so this 165.80 area over here I think is going to be a pretty good uh, resistance point for the SPY and as we all know 90% um, of the stocks out there will follow suit simply because the SPY follows uh, 500 um, is an average of 500 uh, stocks out there okay so it's a pretty short video today so now we'll have some time to do a quick analysis on the UUP, which is the dollar. And as we all know, the dollar should be inverse to the markets. And recently, it has not been. So we have support again here at the 2226 level. And then we get a strong bounce, and that pretty much follows suit with the markets. Um, but nonetheless, we need to still monitor the dollar because when it does start following the dollar again, or it does follow the dollar still, but not as much as it used to. Um, but we still want to follow the dollar just to be sure because the markets are normally inverse to the, to the dollar. And because the markets are not inverse to the dollar at this time or as much as it used to be, uh, the simple fact of the matter is it's something is fighting each other. Something is not correct. And I could say that this could be the correction. Watch out. I am going to say that um, to watch out to have your stops in place, but I'm not going to say that the correction is here today. A lot of people are saying to short, to short, to short the markets, and a lot of people are losing money, losing money, losing money. I don't know if I'm the only one out there that shorts to put a break even stop, uh, stops out break even, and lets the trend go higher. That's also a possibility that other people are doing that too, but I, I haven't heard of anybody doing it the way I am, so I'm still safe. I haven't lost any money yet. Um, what I want to do though is even though I am cautious that I do think that this market could turn over just for a correction not for a crash okay I'm not saying that this is going to be a crash like other people are saying I'm just saying that there's going to be a correction or that's what I, at least I'm hoping for and I'm not hoping for a correction for my benefit to make money um, but I'm also hoping for a correction because that is going to be healthy for the markets the higher the, the longer we we continue this uptrend without pullbacks or without Cons uh, without a significant pullback, that's going to be unhealthy for the markets. And the higher we go, the the farther you know, the higher you go, the harder you'll fall, right? Or the farther you fall, I don't remember the term, but you'll you'll fall a lot harder, a lot faster. And I don't want to see that in the markets. And then the Feds are going to have to jump in and push even more money into the markets just to keep it from falling too much. And then they also have circuit breakers in place to keep flash crashes from happening again. And that's why that's another reason why I don't think a flash crash is going to happen it may don't get me wrong but it's just not anytime soon the markets are showing strength there's nothing right now that's telling me otherwise um, but I do think and again I still stand by what I think the markets should correct um, I just don't know when that's the question and that's what I'm waiting for so you know a lot in this business has to do with patience a lot in this business has to do with um, being a lot more discipline and um, if I cannot have those patience and discipline uh, mentality and keeping my emotions out of my trading then I should not be trading and that's why I think the way I do
in any case so the dollar is pushing higher and you can see it got resistance right where it should have uh, at least for an intraday here and the question is will we continue to pull back on this resistance point here or should we or are we going to shoot higher there is definitely a possibility that at this time it could go either way but I would say that um, because we've just been we just got in a straight shot up here I think maybe we should kind of create a flag of some sort here before breaking up higher and uh, what we will have to do is break through this resistance point here and then ultimately this resistance point here it's going to be difficult to break through what it is going through now simply because we have this area here this is kind of like a flag area here before breaking down so this area here anytime you have this consolidation flag pattern if you will you're gonna have a lot of resistance around this area which is why we are seeing a lot of resistance in the dollar here so just keep that in mind that we may pull back just for a little while and then that gives us enough juice to push even higher and if the markets do follow suit which should be inverted to the dollar then we should see the markets at least pull back and that could be around the 165 level I think that was on 165.80 level this is a chart a daily chart of the GLD so I had that 142.88 level here we went right into the 142.88 I initiated a short um, I put a break even stop and it went right back into the 142.88 uh, level stopping me out break even uh, and then it started just riding on this 142.88 level before pulling back. So I stopped out break even. I'm not gonna lie and say I held on to it and now I'm making money. Yay, you know, ring the bell and whatnot. I was stopped out break even, but that's just the game. That is the business. You know, if I didn't stop out break even, this could have been a flag pattern and it could still be a flag pattern, but I don't think it is anymore. And then shoot higher. I protect myself and I put a break even stop so I'm pretty much out of the game on GLD but what I'm trying to show you is this 142.88 level held up and that 142.88 level looks like that if you had shorted it and you had held it you would be in the money today and you could have easily sold right at this gap fill here which is probably what I would have done anyway had it not stopped the outbreak even. Alright this is the chart of Apple. Apple is showing a little bit more strength, but the fact of the matter is we're still making higher lows and lower lows. Okay, uh, one thing to keep in mind though, let me just zoom in here. You see these two moving averages. If Apple comes down into these two moving averages, we may actually see a bounce here all the way into the 146 uh, 179, possibly making another higher high. That's something uh, to keep your eye on and if we do make a higher high in which case we would have made a lower low then this daily trend for Apple would have changed but right now as I see it, it is still in a downtrend just keep in mind that we are going to get some support around this area here and um, being that Apple is such a expensive stock you know it could bounce twenty dollars in a day in you know I've seen it happen everybody has seen it happen twenty thirty dollars in a day um, you just want to be careful about that and if you're gonna buy you know something like a thousand shares or something so just keep that in mind but this is uh, the leader of the tech sector so we want to just keep an eye on this just to make sure they're also the bigger the biggest player within the S&P 500 or it used to be at least and well it actually still is but we want to just make sure that we watch Apple we get a close above this one uh, 476 39 that's pretty bullish to me and uh, I think we're gonna start heading towards the uh, 200 moving average uh, before getting a small pullback okay so that's Apple this is uh, the daily chart of the JPM or JP Morgan. This is the leader of the tech sector. And until this guy shows weakness, which is kind of what it's doing now, but not really, not anymore, the markets will continue higher and it will stay that way because the finance sector is what's driving the markets. That's everybody knows that. Right now we have support here. Let me just draw a line straight across until you can break down from this line and I think I talked about this in other videos until this line is broken down JP Morgan will stay strong okay we've already made a higher high here before pulling back and we've already made a lower low and that has already t told me on the daily chart at least that the trend is changing back higher so this downtrend didn't last very long so again you have a high you have a lower high and then you have a low and then you have a lower low 
and then you have another lower low and then we had a higher high and now another higher high and then a higher low so basically we we are either going sideways which is what I think we're doing more than we are a trend change and the reason why when when I determine a trend change I like to see the actual close being the lower low or the lower high like for example this it was just the price got there but it didn't close above it so I wouldn't really consider this a close above but I would say a warning a warning that the trend could change okay so just keep that in mind this one did definitely close above here so this is definitely a higher high and this is definitely a lower low so I would say that the trend actually changed from here from these two points rather than um, these two points over here okay so I hope that makes sense basically what I'm trying to say is I don't see weakness in JP Morgan just yet Let's switch to the weekly chart. What we want to see in the weekly chart, and again, the weekly chart is going to be a longer term chart. So this is not something that I would trade or concentrate on um, for any of the types that, of trades that I make, which is a lot, a lot of times very short swing trades, you know, a day or two, that kind of thing. In any case, what we want to see is an actual close below this 20 moving average. That'll show some weakness on JPM and then another close below that. So let's just say, we close below the 20 moving average doesn't matter how how low and then we close next week or the following week below that low below the low of this then I think we start heading down to this area right here which should be around the 50 moving average and this uh, bunch of candle whatever you call it here which would probably give it some support and we'll see if uh, JP Morgan can uh, push higher from there but once JP Morgan comes down that's a five dollar drop that's a big drop markets will have a harder time holding up with Apple being weak and then now JP Morgan if this happens being weak then I have a hard time believing that the markets will stay strong in any case we are already almost into 20 minutes um, that should be it for this video if anything changes I'll definitely update the Facebook page and or update the video for next week again thank you very much for watching these videos and hitting the like button it does I do appreciate it even though I don't make anything off of it um, I just want to say that uh, if you guys are trading and you guys are making money off of these videos um, one thing that I would want to ask for and it's not money it's if maybe you could possibly do just one random good thing uh, one random act of kindness walk an old lady across the street hold the door open for somebody with a ba baby carriage um, or you know anything like that treat somebody to a cup of coffee you know that kind of thing uh, then that I would appreciate and I think that would be a, a great thing for the world itself in any case Thanks again for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Good luck to you. God bless you all. And um, have a great week next week.